Let's move on to employee maintenance now. How we're going to access this particular portion of setting up jobs, job codes, specific wages, etc., and permissions with the employees. So we're going to go to options, we're going to go to administrative, we're going to go to employee maintenance, and this screen is going to give us a lot of use, okay? So it's going to take a few minutes, let's go through it, and this is what I would encourage you to do because there is quite a lot of information, and sitting in front of this TV or what, your computer or what have you and watching me do this is not going to be nearly as robust as you really deciding on how to create these particular functions and to really go through each of these individual screens, and you can see here that there's, uh, there's a lot of screens right here it's just a lot. So I just want to encourage you to take time to really understand what these are. And what's going to help you do that is you can see here that all of these available buttons right here that I've been clicking, you're going to choose yes, no, prompt, or override. Now, if you say no to a specific function, they're never going to be able to do that. And, and, and a manager can't get them in to do that unless they go to the back office. So no is something you don't want to use very often. The other thing is uh, you can give you know, the majority of your managers the, the yes version and give them the ability to pretty much do anything, uh, and it's just especially to do that function. Prompt is what's going to happen when somebody doesn't particularly have a, 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 an initial permission to do that, but you're allowing the manager to actually give that, uh, that uh, sub-security um, uh, employee the ability to perform that specific function. Then there's override, and I want to show you what these look like. So we have yes, we have no, we have prompt and override. Override means that yes, you have the ability to do it, as a manager and you have the ability to override to actually give that sub-level uh, security employee the ability to do that. So uh, that's a quick overview of what that is going to be able to be uh, doing for you. The other thing right here is that when we click on these individual items, you can see there's a little explanation right here. It says, like for delete items, the ability to delete items off of the invoice. So as you click through these, if you don't really know what it's trying to convey to you right here with just the simple text, definitely look at this um, specific line right here that's going to tell you, hey, this is what this function is meant for. So you can see that this can be uh, pretty arduous if you're doing this for each individual customer, okay? Now we're going to show you how to create a customer and we're, going to, we're actually going to do that. But the other thing that I want to talk about is just to kind of get you over that, that, really, that feeling of, wow, this is going to be a lot of work, is setting up job codes. That's going to really give you a default for each individual level of employee. And you can set up those job codes and default wages and then you can override them and other specific permissions that you might want to give individually to an employee. You can adjust their specific template as well and give them those permissions. This is a very flexible flexible employee permissions and security uh, interface. So I, I really want to encourage you to utilize this to its greatest breadth and depth because it, it is great. It's a great thing. So let's actually create an employee and see what that's going to look like. We're going to press add employee. So let's give them an ID. I'll just choose 22. And you can apply them to a department, but in, in this case we're not going to. The other thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to swipe an ID, and I'll show you a different way to access the system that we, other than what we've been doing with PIN codes. Now, I've just swiped a card. It has a unique value on it, uh, a unique serial number value. Now, the thing I want to discuss is that the reason that swiping IDs and access via the card swipe gives you an added level of security is because if you were to just use pins, let's say someone, uh, that sub-security employee is looking over the manager's so shoulder and the manager's typing in their pin, uh, right then and there they've gained access to the back office and other sensitive features within the software, which is really you know, sensitive features of your business. So using card swipe IDs is a great investment. It's not very expensive to actually just purchase these cards. Um, but it's, it's a huge benefit for you with respect to security. So we've done that. Um, you can also make them a customer if you'd like. Now let's give them a password. And for s just the sake of time, I'm actually going to give this customer, uh, this employee, uh, my name, and we're going to make their password my first name. So the display name is going to be Chris A. And the hourly wage, we're just going to leave that blank because we're just going to apply that with job codes. 
and we're going to keep this employee enabled. Um, if, if you want them to take tips or require clock in before login, definitely you can do that. But for this purpose, uh, I'm not going to require that. And then you can also give them administrative card access if you'd like. And those are some great check boxes. Now, you see, we could go through here and we could just create all of these individual permissions. But now that we actually have a, uh, an employee selected and created, we're going to save that. And would you like to create another employee? No, we would not. And you can see that this has already completely been created. And one of the things I'd like to point out is with respect to the employee ID, what you see right here is that the store number 1001 is put in front of the number that I assigned to them. So that's the store number. So keep in mind that if you're wondering, wow, why is this changing? That is what's happening. Is that, and that's one of the good reasons to put, this, uh, put, put everything on a card swipe because the store number is going to be uh, put, in, put on there as a default. So let's jump in to creating a job code and making this a lot easier. Now that we're in the job code setup, we're going to add a job code. And let's make this one cashier. We can supply a default wage, $8.50 an hour. You can have a picture for the button. And again, see the keyboard is appearing here. I'm just using this keyboard to give you the most screen access to view. Definitely want to give them access to the POS. Require cash drawer selection. Require cash count screen on clock out. That's basically giving the, them the ability to use the cash drawer, claim a specific till at the beginning of uh, the shift, and then have to be responsible for when they count it down, having the uh, appropriate um, amount in there. And then we can do a default overtime wage, and let's just say $15 an hour. Number of copies for the shift report. We're actually just, just going to do one, but you can do up to three there. Include department totals, itemized credit card transactions. I would definitely say that's a good one. And assignable by admin only. Now, here is the big thing that we were talking about. You see this button right here, permissions? Let's actually hit that, and we'll take you to the exact same screen that's on each individual employee. And what we can do is we can go through here and actually assign yes, no, prompt, or override to the particular cashiers. So I'm going to take a minute and actually create a cashier, all of the specific um, uh, rudimentary aspects of cashier functions. I've gone through and I've created an entire job code, and there's a couple of things that I want to show you to keep in mind. So you can see right here that I've gone through pretty much every one of these tabs, and I'm just back on functionality to show you what's going on, that I'm on page one. So we have invoice discounts right here. Let's click on that. And the ability to do the invoice and line discounts is the explanation of what invoice discounts are. Now you see I chose prompt there, and that's just to basically have a manager give this, uh, this employee the ability to do that. The other thing is I, I've logged it as an exception. I want to see when that happens. When an invoice discount has occurred, that's just a, a random discount that isn't a sale that I've previously set up as a manager or something like that. These are things that I want to know about. Other thing is, is being able to void an entire invoice. Sometimes you just want to log those in ex, as an exception. And it's not really a requirement, but I just wanted to show you that you want to log those as exceptions and be able to do audit trails on things like that. Now, let's see what happens when I update this. Do I wish to continue? Yes. And now let's exit. Okay, so we're still there. Let's go ahead and exit out of this screen right there. And I want to go back there and you can see what's going to happen. And this is why you need to be careful. We're still on cashier. We're going to click permissions. You see, it looks like all of your permissions have disappeared. Okay? So you see we were on functionality and just a second ago it was there. Now, one of those things that it, it's a little bit difficult sometimes to remember what all you put as an exception, as, as not only log as exceptions, but what you put in there for yes, no, prompt, and override. So just be careful to, to not really allow yourself to uh, n not finish what you're trying to do here. So these settings are set, but everything's blank right here, so it doesn't give you that remembrance that you would, might hope for. So. I just want you to be careful with that. So we'll exit out of that job code. And now you, now you can see how to cashier in and cashier out. So it's very easy to do. You just require that for an individual employee. And now we can go to this individual employee, which is myself, put individual personal information in here, phone number, email, birthday, things like that. Um, and this is where we're going to assign that job code. And you can assign multiple job, co job codes to this individual. But let's go to job codes and wages, and let's add a job code to that person, okay? So you saw I clicked add, and then I chose the job code, 
Hourly wage, now this is where you can override that for an individual employee, but let's go ahead and choose the default and let's choose the overtime wage there. So now that cashier uh, job code is assigned as, as the ability for this, this individual employee to operate as a cashier they can do it. Now you can remove that as well and you can definitely change the wages, et cetera. Then we have store associations if they have, if you have multiple so stores or things like that, that they can work at multiple stores and have the appropriate accounting for that. So that in essence is how um, employee maintenance is going to work. Let's look at time clock management. So you can see here that I've clocked in uh, at least once today and that I have those right there. Now we can edit these things by, by reprinting the shift report where you can see that we can look at that. We can definitely change jo job codes from here. So let's say that um, somebody's going to be a cashier for the first half of the day and then shift manager the last half. That's something that we want to do is be able to change the job code uh, you know, manually this way. Now we can have it in the schedule. We're going to get into the labor scheduler in just a second. But what I wanted you to see is that you actually have the ability here to make those specific changes. And you can look at the start date and end date. And you can see this is pretty user friendly. So that's how you would edit time cards. That in essence is the fullness of employee maintenance.